This part of South Dakota and the city of Lead is mining territory. People from all over the Black Hills have worked for the Homestake Mining Company, the longest continuously running gold mine in the world. It's a one company town. Without Homestake, there would be no Lead. A lot of the miners are like third and fourth generation. Uh, their grandparents worked in the mine and then their parents. And so it's like a big family. It takes six tons of rock to produce just one ounce of gold. Miners work six days a week digging, crushing, and grinding the ore to unlock the gold. If you grind it fine enough, you're going to release the gold. Uh, it's not in the grain boundaries or anything like that. It's actually free gold. If you look at this table here, it's nothing more than an automated gold pan. It's doing the same thing the old timers did in the stream, except it's much more efficient and it's doing a lot faster and a lot more material. See that little golden streak coming down the table? That's the gold. But that streak is only half the gold in this ore. To extract the rest, the rubble goes to giant tanks of cyanide. Cyanide dissolves gold just like sugar is, dissolves in water. Uh, it makes a pure solution out of it. After the gold was extracted, the cyanide solution was dumped into the town's Whitewood Creek, killing everything in the water. For over a hundred years, the creek ran black. The Environmental Protection Agency gave Homestake one year to develop a plan to get the cyanide out of the creek. The mine managers weren't sure how to tackle the problem and keep the mine profitable. For the people in Leeds, South Dakota, profits for homestake meant jobs for the town. There's very few things besides cyanide that will dissolve gold, and they're a lot nastier than cyanide. Homestake's chief executive officer added a challenge, make the stream pure enough for trout. Homestake hired a local biochemist, Jim Whitlock. And the problem was not money. They were willing to spend whatever it took. But the problem was there was no available technology to do this. There wasn't anything that they could take off the shelf. The fate of the mine, uh, er everything was riding on it. Whitlock and his team decided to use their background in microbiology to try something new. We started with, with a simple knowledge that bacteria could tolerate cyanide, and we knew that some bacteria could tolerate a lot more cyanide than others. In fact, this was a, a standard means for microbiologists to identify bacteria based on how much cyanide they could tolerate. And so we looked into that in depth, and what we found out is that they actually broke the cyanide molecule into two parts, and so that they could actually use it as a food source. We had a lot of apprehension for a long time. Uh, we had to convince our board of directors that this new process, this all new way of doing things would work. And we had to ask them for $10 million. This was the only thing uh, that we found that had any potential to work. So it was a one-shot deal, and it had to work. That was a little bit on the scary part. It worked. Today, all the water from the underground mine is filtered through these tanks, each containing about 20,000 pounds of Pseudomonas bacteria attached to plastic discs. Now, the bacteria like to attach to things, and they have a little tail that they use to propel themselves around in the water. They'll discard the tail and secrete a slime layer, which is how they attach to the plastic disc. So as the disc rotates very slowly, about one and a half revolutions per minute, uh, partially submerged in the water tank, the bacteria are attached to the disc. So they're in the water, and then they're back in the air, and then they're in the water. So when they're in the air, this helps satisfy their oxygen requirement. And when they're in the water then, uh, they're actually uh, picking up cyanide and absorbing metals. Every day, four million gallons of clean water pours out of the treatment plant and into the Whitewood Creek. 
Once the plant went online in 1984, within six months, there were fish moving into the stream. Fish, of course, are the best chemists of all. You can't fool them. It's either okay for them or it isn't. Meet the canaries of the Homestake gold mine. Before the water goes through the pipe and into the creek, trout kept at the treatment plant give the final approval. The fish were happy. The pseudomonas had plenty to eat as they broke down the cyanide for food. The bookkeepers were happy too. We were uh, looking at a process, chemical process that would probably have cost us three to four million dollars a year for chemicals and, and operation. And we ended up with a biological process that cost us approximately a half million dollars a year to operate. Today, the ore blasted out of the earth provides work for a thousand local residents and uncounted trillions of bacteria. The result is a thousand bars of gold a year.